Okay, so I'll record uh, the lecture from yesterday and post it online later today along with this guy. So before we get started with the NIOS, there were a couple of questions asked about the final project. The first question was on if you could do something like a TiVo, uh, which Ezra asked, that is, can you get data in from the video? Uh, but there is no video in, you mean from the VGA, Ezra? But there's no coax on this. So I can give you like a different board. But the answer is yes, you can. And there was another question asked about, uh, which Connor asked about DSP audio. The answer is you can, right? And that's why we are using this NIOS approach. In the sense, if you look at the university, let's see, the program installer, uh, embedded systems, you look at the IP cores, okay? So let's take the SD card. So here is the SD card controller, okay? The question you want to ask yourself is, if you want to do something like a TiVo, do you want to write the SD card controller from scratch and do everything in VHDL? Or do you want to do it on a processor, or do you want to do the TiVo thing on a processor-based system, okay, with C code? Well, the answer is, the answer to that question depends on what you want to do, right? Let's say you want to learn about hardware from the lowest level, everything hardware with no software at all. There is no C code. Right, because a processor-based system is a hardware-based system, but it's you're writing C code is at a higher level of abstraction. But the bottom line is, we want to just do pure hardware. Yes, you can, right? But then you don't have time to do that because you have only five weeks. Okay? Even the unless you're like an industry expert who's been working on this for like 25 years, who knows hardware inside out, you pro probably can't get a full hardware-based design done in five weeks. Okay, that's why. You, we are making this design decision of using a processor. Same goes for DSP. Is that clear? But that does not mean it will be easy. It is easier more probably than just doing everything in VHDL. However, it involves a lot of steps. Like what we are doing is we need to use QSYS to instantiate a NIOS system. But as you think about this when you're doing, when you're instantiating the system, it is not that difficult, right? Excuse me, it is easier to do this abstractly than is put a NIOS processor and write C code rather than doing it all in hardware. Okay. But it does does but does that does not mean you can you can just do this blindly. Okay. So yeah, it's doable, definitely. All these projects. And I encourage you to do that. So you uh, a more involved practical project like this, all right? because that's what the point, not only of this course, forget the fact that it is the point of this course. It's like, what do you want to learn, right? You're a junior electrical engineer. So I can tell you, forgetting Berkeley itself, right? Uh, schools like UMass Amherst, which are quote unquote, not at the level of like Madison, quote unquote, right? They do projects, like I said, uh, at the junior level, which involves two DE2 boards and they send video between the boards. So it's what you're all doing is like a standard project in any other school. And I encourage you to do it. So, okay, do you have any other questions before you get started? Okay, so no questions. And so what I've done here is I've recreated the project from last lecture. So let me start renaming all this, which I've not done yet. Uh, so here is the sys ID peripheral, which you need to assign a unique system ID. And then interval timer, we rename that as, I forgot what I called it. Um, I think I just let's do it as timer. PIO, I'm gonna call it hex PIO, okay? So we have on the DE1, we have four hex displays, that's 28 bits, yes? But I'm gonna make it 32 bits, just to keep it standard, okay? Uh, output, and there is no IRQ. Does mean you're just writing to the hex display, you don't need an interrupt, okay? Uh, let's see, there's IRQ there. I'm gonna export this conduit, right? Double click to export, XPIO external connection. And no errors, no warnings, just info messages. Let's look at our HDL. Uh, so it looks like clock in, reset in active low, XPIO, yes. So looking good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this. And what, I, what I'm gonna do is under display high, my project folder, I'm gonna create a subfolder called as the NIOS2 
subsystem, if you will. Okay, I'm going to call this NIOS2 subsystem. Remember I told you it's a good idea to have separate folders for what you do, where it just keeps it clean. And don't put spaces in folder names, please. And I was, uh, Unix can handle spaces, right? That is, if you put a backslash with an escape character followed by a space, that's a space. Okay? However, it's very cumbersome, number one. Number two, most of these tools are, these GUIs are actually front ends to command line scripts. Okay, so the command line scripts probably don't have the escape character to handle spaces. It's you can keep arguing about this, but there's no point. Or right? just don't put spaces in folder names. It's a very simple thing not to do. Right? Okay, so looks like we're good. No errors, no warnings. Now what we're going to do is we're going to generate the NIOS processor. Okay, so go under generation, and let's see. I'm not going to create a simulation model. All right, oops create HDL files for synthesis, go into VHDL, create a block symbol file, right? So I'm gonna create the synthesis file. The simulation I'm not gonna cover in lecture because it takes too long, right? However, if you wanna do the simulation, which I encourage you to do, remember I told you last lecture, you can make a simulation project, okay? That is, you can create a final project where you just simulate something and you show me, hey, this is how you do this in model sim, right? So if you go back in here, Hopefully, yeah, it is up. There is a model sim tutorial under weeks four and five material on the digital systems website here. Okay. So let's see if it opens up. Simulating. You can also do a signal tab if you want. So here it is. Okay. So it's very nice, that is you can look at, so your final project could be understanding functionality of the Avalon bus, okay? It's a bus, which is on any process system, there are buses, okay? So you gotta, one of the first questions you gotta ask yourself is, is it synchronous? It is synchronous, all right? What kind of Indianness is it? There are buses, for example, the Power PC bus, if I remember right, it's big Indian at the byte level, but it's little Indian at the bit level. So it's kind of messed up, right? So uh, it, it's just the way it is, the protocol, right? So this could be a final project. I'm not gonna cover this because it just takes too long to do, to make simulation for models and test benches, okay? If you're interested in this as an, if you're interested in this as a final project, um, then talk to me in office hours or in, stop by my office. And I recommend you start thinking about your final project. Although your uh, one page proposal is due only I think on October, 11th or I don't think it's due this week, but check the syllabus, okay? But the sooner you start on this, the better. You can start on the final project actually by the end of today's lecture. Next lecture this week, we'll just I'll just show you how to initialize SDRAM, okay? And that's about it for the basic NIOS system. Next week, I'm gonna go into how do you connect a custom core with the NIOS. That is, you have to make an Avalon bus interface, okay? And the uh, grueling details of this are in Chu's book, right, for the Avalon. Again, I, start, I recommend you start thinking about your project. I highly recommend you finalize what you're gonna do by the end of this week and type up your proposal so you can get started on it. Yeah. All right, I should have actually clicked generate before I started doing my talking, because it takes some time, but let it start generating, okay? It actually doesn't take that long if you're not doing simulation. So and you can see it just um, goes through its motions. Now, something about QSys and the software environment you're gonna use for writing the C code, which is Eclipse, okay? Both of them are written in Java. In my opinion, Java is not the best language to do this. So bottom line is, you might see a lot of crashes, especially as your project gets bigger, but it's just the way it is. Oh, I got a lot of warnings. What warnings are these? Uh, no matching reset IRQ. Hmm. So it's reset request, okay. Uh, it's not IRQ. Hum. I've never gotten this warning before. 
uh, maybe I forgot something. Let's see what happens. Uh, we sh you should address all warnings. Let's see, NIOS 2, no matching role form for reset controller. But I can't get into this tab because it's synthesizing. But anyway, let it synthesize. Unless I didn't connect any resets, which is possible. So let's take a look. Okay, so while it's doing this, let's go back to our um, Quartus and see if we have imported the pin assignments. I believe we did, but let me just check. Yeah, I've imported it. So let's create our top level file in the sense. Uh, let's start typing this in. So this is library, the usual IEEE. You don't need the numeric underscore rand standard library per se because we're not going to be doing any conversions, but let's just have it in there. I use port. Okay, so we're going to have our clock in, yes. Let's use our LEDs to make sure that our hardware is downloaded. Yes. And our hex displays x3, x2, x1, x0. Okay, save that. Let's see what this follows up to. It's generating the hex uh, course, so let's generate that. So architecture, this is our top level, NIOS. Okay, so pattern on LEDs, LEDs to indicate hardware is programmed, is um, impacted. That's what the Xilinx program is called. It's called impact. It's impacted on FPGA, right? LEDG is, let's see. Let's make it 1010, right? Just something to show that it's been downloaded, okay? Let's see where this guy is. Okay, it's got a lot of warnings, and that concerns me. And it's this uh, no matching role and form for reset controller. Let's see what generated that warning. Uh, Merlin interrupt mapper transform. So it's some uh, interrupt. Let's see, did I not connect any reset? Uh, reset. Reset out. There's reset. There's reset. There's reset. Yeah, it looks like I connected all the resets. And the instruction master, data master, is connected. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that warning looks like it can be safely ignored. Let's see what happens. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the instantiation template and put this at my top level. So before my begin goes my component, yes. And here's my instantiation. So I'm, uh, I don't need that component there. You could leave it in there. Okay, so clock, and I forgot to import my keys. That's okay. I'll import them shortly. So clock is clock underscore 50. Now, like I told you, Inside the NIOS, there it does use a PLL, all right? I believe it should. Let's look at the compilation report. If it doesn't, um, you should ideally use an external PLL. But like I told you last lecture, it's a good practice to use external PLLs, right? So anyway, uh, key zero. All right, so let me add key zero there. In. Okay. All right, so connected to reset N, I've taken care of this. So I can delete this template stuff. All right, now I need to connect my hex PIO to my hex displays. Yes? So how am I going to do that? 
so can i do so how am i going to connect so how am i going to connect my xpios with a 32 bits wide to my hex displays what am i going to do What do you mean? Divide this out into? Yeah, you can do that, but something simpler than that. So what would you do? Something very simple that you can do. So you want to make a 32-bit signal? this yeah that's what you do 31 very simple okay so it's basically a wire right 32 bits wide so here it is so I don't know if this is what uh, Jake was talking about but so you take uh, so this is 32 bits wide yes but now we're going to take this and map it out uh, to hex displays right so hex uh, let's do hex zero goes hex out six down to zero yes I'm gonna leave the seventh bit out hex one goes hex out uh, 15 down to eight the reason why I leave the seventh bit out is let's say somebody's migrating this design to the de2 and they want to use the decimal point so that's how you think about this okay it's just standard practice then I'm gonna leave leave the 16th bit out let's say eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I get 8 bits here. Yes? That doesn't work, right? Yeah? So it should not be 15, it should be 14. Uh, because this is only 7 bits wide. That's all it is. Okay? So leave 15 out. Uh, then let's go. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yes, and finally, let's see, it should go, leave 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That's correct, right, and 31 is the most significant. Is that clear? So that's the mapping. All right, anything else? Uh, looks like we are hex out, assigned, looking good. Yes, and notice the way I did this, right? I could have done hex three as zero down to six. But that doesn't make good design sense, yes? Hex 3 is the most significant display, if you will. So the most significant bits of my bus control Hex 3. These are all the little things you got to think about as you're doing this. Right? Should actually not even think about this. It should come naturally to you. Because you're, by now you're like juniors in EE. Right? Okay, as usual, let me do an analysis and synthesis first. And go from there. Uh, all right, so it's going to well analyze and synthesize. Hopefully, we don't have any errors. And what I was trying to do in the meantime is I was trying to in, put in the university program installer. So you go under software tools. Let's see if I can do it. Maybe they're blocking access to FTP. Okay, not successful. That's good. Let's see what errors we got. Oh! How do you fix this error? Here's the error. No odd instance U0 instantiates undefined entity NIOS2 subsystem. So what happened? Huh? No, the names are right. Yeah, I don't have a file for it. So let's add it. Okay, that's all it is. It should recognize the QSYS module, but it's under NIOS2 subsystem. And there it is, okay? Let's add that in there. That's not the top level. Let me move it down. So the top level is on the top, the first. So test top level entity. Let's try this again. 
Let's see what this is doing. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. Now you know why I don't go through this in lecture, because it just takes time to do this. Okay. Yeah, elaborating QC system entity. Let's see. So it's going to take a little bit of time. This one's adding NIOS 2. So let me pause the lecture and we'll get back to it. Uh, let's see. We can't really write the C code. But actually, I, I won't pause the lecture. Let me talk about uh, SBT for Eclipse, Software Build Tools for Eclipse. It should be here is the shortcut to Eclipse, but that's not. That's an that's for 2920, I believe. What I have. Let's get into Altera. I asked to embed it. Okay. So I'm going to send this to the desktop. Okay, so don't use this Eclipse, the older Eclipse, because it's not configured for the NIOS 2, right? The environment. So use NIOS 2 software build tools for Eclipse. Now, the thing about this, I usually run it as administrator, okay? That's what I used to do, but lately I've moved away from it because it's now working properly with respect to permissions. So what that means is I create my project in a location where I have write permissions, okay? If not, you will run into like weird errors. So if you're running into errors, you don't even understand. Check like if Eclipse crashes often, for example. Check your permissions, okay? When you have like permissions error, it's saying that it's got some make errors. I recommend you start a new software system. It means your permissions are screwed up. Definitely don't put spaces in your folder names, okay? All right, so let's see how this guy is going. Uh, it's, see, this really bothers me. No matching role found for reset controller. Reset request. Uh, let's see, let me go back in here. Did I actually connect the reset properly? Because I never get that warning. here. Reset vector. Okay, so let me keep going. And on my tablet, it is really slow. On your computers, it's hopefully faster than this. I know on my Mac, it's pretty fast. It takes like, if I have a system like this, which is running my Windows, emu the Mac, the OS X, which is running a Windows emulator, um, it takes like 20 seconds to synthesize this, right? Just this bare bone system. By the way, as you keep adding stuff to this, your synthesis time goes up. So in my case, for that little um, D5M camera interface, all the way through the fitter, just the hardware takes me four minutes okay, to do. So it's going to keep going up. So you really cannot add like one module, synthesize, check. Add another module, synthesize, check. No, it's, it'll take too long. So you have to create like, the first time you create a project, it should be like every, every one of these in there, right? And hopefully, you create it so there are no errors and it actually works. So let's see. Yeah. Still working on it. All right, so that's the only spiel I had. And I can't really start Eclipse until my hardware is done. Because what Eclipse is going to do, so okay, I can talk about that. So the way Eclipse works is there are actually two subparts to Eclipse. Okay, One is it creates something called as the BSP, or the Board Support Package. The set of device drivers based on your hardware. Since your hardware is not synthesized yet, I can't create the BSP, okay? So once it creates the board support package, using the BSP, you write C code. That's how it works, right? So basically, we have to wait till this is done, so 10%, right? I'm pretty slow, All right? Hopefully it gets faster. Let me take a break, drink some water, and I'll be back. So it's only at 97, well, we only had analysis and synthesis, now we do the fitter. But I want you to pay attention to one important warning message, okay? So look at this. Mega function that supports open core plus feature will stop functionality in one hour after device is programmed. What that means is to actually use your NIOS 2 processor indefinitely, you need a license from Altera. It's a protected IP. So if you disconnect the USB, once you program it, the processor will stop functioning after one hour. Okay? The other option is you can keep the USB connected. 
and then it'll be unlimited because so it's not a big deal it's something you got to be aware of when i i forgot about this because when i designed for the nios on my mac i actually have the full i have this subscription edition of quartus so my nios 2 is unlocked actually it's not a big deal just remember that right cuz i remembered this cuz i was paying attention to my well warnings okay. all right so let's do an assembler assembly now let's let's fit and now actually technically i should have what is called as the sopc file system on a programmable chip file that helps us create the board support package because it has actually nothing to do with the fitter so let's see if i have that yeah here it is okay this is what you need to create the board support package and to be honest a lot of these files are actually text files so let's see if this is a text file i believe it is so you can take a look at um yeah there it is right it's basically an xml file Because remember, I told you all these GUIs are front ends to script tools, okay? Command line scripts and command line scripts they process text files, right? So a lot of these you can open up in like Firefox and just take a look at it. Right? So the more you know about all this, the better. These are like what? So at Berkeley, I used to be called as a hacker. Right? This is this is actually not hacking, but this is like low level stuff which you should be, you should do, right? Okay. So that's good. Now, something about Eclipse, right? Eclipse has workspaces. You may have used them in 2920, right? I'm not really familiar with workspaces. The rule of thumb I use is for every project I create a separate workspace within the project folder, right? Just so Eclipse doesn't get messed up um between different projects. Okay, so here is what I call Eclipse workspace. Right. So now we can actually start. Let's see if the fitter, no, fitter is pretty fast, which is good. The fitter is surprisingly faster than the analysis and synthesis for the NIOS. Where it will become slower is as you start filling this up. Okay, as the FPGA starts filling up, your fitter will take a lot more time. Just to let you know, right? Okay, so let's start uh, NIOS to software build tools for Eclipse. I'm not going to run this as administrator, right? Um, and see what happens on your laptops so let's start i'm not a big fan of eclipse because i think it's pretty buggy but that's just me right. rather i would just use command line tools by the way if you want to use command line tools okay uh, let's see if you go back to well my wireless is disabled but i don't think it's cached so if you go back to weeks 4 and 5 nios example right that folder there's another document which shows you how to use command line tools that is you can do whatever i'm doing from the command line right so you can open up let's see should be in here you're to open up a special command line command shell so if you're a uh, okay in industry right to be honest when you work on this for a company that's a good company your manager you will see them all use like command line tools nobody does gui it's slow okay like if your manager he or she knows what they're doing they won't do gui and eventually you will migrate towards that uh, all right so let's see where we at okay so select a workspace and like i said i use separate workspaces for every project Right, Eclipse workspace, boom. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, flow was successful. It's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my DE1 board. Uh, it's been assembled. All right. Let's just take a quick look at the RTL view. Eclipse is loading. Forty-two percent, ninety-four percent. There it is. Obviously, there's nothing. Okay. Let's see if we can actually look at the NIOS processor. Okay, here it is. 
So what it's actually complaining was this reset request. Looks like it's something internal, right? So anyway, here's a NIOS processor. Let's zoom out. So yeah, it's. I'm surprised you can actually see the IP. It's not, not a big deal, but there it is. All right. Yeah, okay, here is Eclipse. Okay. So when you st if you start the wrong version of Eclipse, which you shouldn't really do, you won't see this NIOS 2 up there, okay? If you're an expert in like scripting, you can use your, you can configure your 2920 Eclipse for doing NIOS, for working with NIOS 2. I don't recommend you do that, right? It's really involved. It's no point, right? They already give it to you. It works actually pretty well. So just use it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to File New, whoops. Uh, NIOS 2 application and both support package from template, right? You need both. The application is your Seek program. The BSP is your device drivers, the both support package for your hardware, right? So let's click on that and give it some time. So there is the command line equivalent, right? And there it is. I'm gonna create a blank project. You can do hello world, etc., right? You can even do LEDs. Uh, like count binary, but I'm just going to do a blank project. Right? So SOPC file, system on a programmable chip, so go into your C drive, go, go into your project folder, wherever that is, there it is. And give it some time, it does its thinking. Again, on my tablet, it's very slow. Right? Hopefully I don't have a permissions issue and it doesn't crash, but what it should show you is it should show you that I'm going to create a folder called software, so there's finally it got the CPU name. So in here, it will create a folder called software, all right? And within software, there'll be two subfolders, one for the BSP, the board support package, the other for your C code itself. So let's see if it's done with that. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have to type in the project name. Let's just call it um, uh, display high. So under software, like I said, under the main project folder, you don't have to, you can call this anything else. I'm just going to display high, so I'm calling it display high, right? Hit next. Uh, so create a new BSP based on the application project template. That's fine. Hit finish. Okay. Importing new project into workspace. It takes its time. So while it's doing that, let's go in here. Uh, let's download the hardware and make sure it's not like hosed or anything. Device, USB blaster. So here it is. Uh, contains one or more time limited mega functions. That's the NIOS 2. All right. So that's okay. You'll see that message. So it minimizes it. Hello. Oops, come on. So there it is. Okay. Connecting. So right now it's unlimited. All right. Because the USB is connected. The moment you take out the USB, it will run for one hour. But here is the pattern. I guess I put AA, right? One zero one zero one zero one zero. 0, 0, 1, 0. So at least you know that that line is executing, right? We don't know about the NIOS. We'll find out shortly, but it's in there, right? When you say it only run for an hour, does that mean like you have to reset the file next time? No, you have to download it again. No, you don't have to recompile. Right? I just leave it plugged in. Whoa, it's slow. On my tablet, it's pretty slow. Let's see, you can't do anything about it. All right, there it is. So under the Project Explorer, it's created new, I mean, two new subfolders. One is the display high, the other is the BSP. So if you click on these arrows next to this, so here is our hardware abstraction layer, right? I highly recommend you look at the summary.html uh, before you start out, because it shows you, basically, I don't actually look at the outline view, a summary of the board support package so uh, this is how your linker, which is what your object code come, linker is how where you get your object code from, right? So the linker sections are all mapped onto on-chip RAM, which is correct, right? So once uh, next lecture, when we map to SD RAM, you should see these change to SD RAM. Is that clear? So and then what else is there? Uh, it shows you a bunch of other information as well. If you go into settings, 
Oops, you can open this. Uh, you can look, oh yeah, system.h is another important file. This is the header file we are going to include, okay? So system.h, don't modify this, it's auto-generated. So it has all the defines and uh, preprocessor directives that you can use uh, in your C code. For example, here is your hex PIO base, all right? That's what we're going to use. Uh, but first, let me enable my wireless because I'm going to sh show you that on that weeks four and five uh, link, you do have sample code. So we're going to look at that. Okay. Let me enable this. But in the meantime, now what we're going to do is before we create the C file, there is something important that you have to configure for your BSP, okay, the board support package. Right now, you have only, I think I chose, I put 16 kilobytes of RAM, all right? Doesn't matter, you have very little memory because you're not using SD RAM. You can't really use printfs, okay? You can only do the bare minimum. So if you try to compile your code, you'll get an error from the compiler saying it's not gonna fit, okay? Because you don't have enough memory. So you have to tell your system to generate small C drivers, okay? So the way you do that is you configure the BSP. So go here, go to properties. So again, it's under BSP, okay? Right click on this, go to properties. Now I ask to BSP properties, just hit apply. And it should, oh God, it's slow. All right, let's see if I'm online. Connected. Okay, so here is a display hideout. See, I also have a corresponding header file which you can look at, all right? I'm not gonna use the header file, I'm just gonna show you the C code, right? Because you don't need the header file. I have some other definitions in there. I don't even remember what I have in there. All right. Okay, so what you want is you don't want C++, okay? You want reduced reverse drivers. You want small C library, is that clear? So again, it's a bare bone system. There is no operating system on it, right? So you have to know exactly what you're doing. So you can try it if you want to see what error you get. You will say, I, it will say, I can't fit your code. But once we have SDRAM going, everything's kosher. We got eight megabytes of SDRAM. Right? So, I mean, there's no way, unless you're writing a mini Compiler, it's like, oh, like overrun this DRAM. Okay. okay, hit OK. Hit apply. Okay, saving BSC, BSP settings and regenerating BSP. It's taking time. Let me see if I can finish this before the lecture ends. If not, I will finish it up next time. Okay. So, next lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do the whole SDRAM thing because I know it's going to take a long time, right? I'll get it generated. So, next lecture, we'll go through the high level ideas behind using SDRAM. Okay, but for now, let me show you while it's doing this. Let me look, let's look at the display hi.c. Uh, well, I can't really open it. Okay, let's just save it. And I can, uh, let's see, it's downloaded. So uh, I think it's uh, done with this. Hit OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, uh, let's do this. Let's look at the display hi.c. Let's go into downloads. There is display high.c. Okay. Uh, let me cut this. I'm going to go into my project folder. I'm just going to add the C file. Right? Instead of typing it from scratch, just to save time, go under software, not the BSP. Okay. Here is your display high. You can look at the make file. All right. How many of you have done, have used make? A little bit. So, well, here's a chance. Right. Okay, so I've, it should actually, if you go back into Eclipse, it should see this. If it doesn't, there is the C file. Right click on, okay, this is hardware, both support package and device drivers, okay? This is your code. Don't mix them up. Don't add your display high under the BSP. Don't do that, please, okay? And if you do that, that's really stupid, right? And if you say, hey, Bart, it's not working, I'm not going to help you. Because you're not paying attention when you're doing this. 
that's not a bug that's a reason to get fired all right okay so if you uh, where is refresh anybody see oh here it is f5 refresh and there it is okay refreshing so it saw display high now what i do is i right click on this oh and see you see this little green probably in the people in the back end see it's a little green um, dot yes that means it has included that file in the make file all right so let's say you have multiple c files and they're like hey what's going on it's not compiling the code make sure there is a red i mean there's a green dot that, that's what that's what said tells you that it's been included in the make file or look at the make file right don't modify the make file by hand unless you are not using eclipse you're doing command line code so just to be sure if you want you can say you can right click on this and see well don't say remove from nios 2 build right if it's not added there'll be an option that's saying add to nios 2 build so just little things you got to pay attention to right uh, so let's double click on this i don't even know what's in this right a simple program which displays high on the d1 hex 1 hex 0 displays okay uh, so lcd in it um, we don't need well there is no display high dot h okay so i'm going to modify this a little bit so see there is a little question mark it's like i can't find this file that's what it's saying so i'm just going to do system dot h save it okay and it should uh, let's see it should go away but i haven't compiled anything yet so let's uh, let me take out else how much time do i have i have 6 minutes so let me take out everything i don't need the lcd in it I don't need the initial message because I'm not using printf's initializes LCD if there is one, but I'm just going to take out all this. All right, display high on the seven segment displays. So first of all, it is not LED PIO base, right? I believe it's hex PIO base, but let's just look at system dot h to be sure. Hex PIO base, okay? So it's so a couple of things to notice here. notice the embedded programs never terminate so this return zero is redundant okay in other words you don't have an operating system to which you can go back to so all your nios 2c code the main function should have a while one infinite loop at the end so you don't just go out of I mean, it doesn't make any sense what are you going to do after your main right notice i have an if def so if this is not defined you don't like write somewhere where you're not supposed to write okay this is the input output read write uh, the wrapper for writing to pio right and the information for this is again online right software developer handbook it's there uh so led pio base nope it's not base it's base right there is no underscore okay thank you and if you actually move your mouse cursor over this it'll actually show you if it's defined right it should well it's not so let's see and 2553 is um decimal for each i right and then the rest is turned off uh let's see it's mm -mm. actually the rest is not going to get turned off because it's active no yeah it's active low so it's going to get turned on right but anyway let's just see what happens because this shouldn't matter with the, because of the way i used the hex displays that is the least significant hex 0 goes to the least significant bits etc right so let's uh, let's see how much time do i have i got only 3 minutes so let's build everything see if we have any errors project uh, so let's see if we go into build project uh, first it will make the bsp okay the board support package and then so it's you can see it's compiling all the hardware abstraction layer stuff right okay so we are actually done in the sense i, I don't know if it'll, it's going to get done within the next 3 minutes it's pretty slow so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause the lecture here and if it does get done no actually it will get done definitely before the next class starts so i'll finish it up and i'll post it online so that's about it let me pause it hopefully there are no errors past 3921 but anyway so as i uh, compiled this code i got this error saying it's undefined reference to this function so basically that definition means 
well, this error means it's not there in system.h. So I looked at my header file from online, downloaded it, looked at it. So there it is, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to include these two files because I'm thinking that you need well, system types, Altera system types. So just include those and see the errors go away. Hopefully it does. So. See console. Yes, the elf file has been generated. It's good. And let me pause the lecture again. And actually, no, it's been generated. So no errors so far. And actually, we don't need the welcome screen, so I'm gonna close that as well. So your program is actually, if you looked at the messages, it's 10 kilobytes. It's done, build finished. All right, so let's download this to the DE1 uh, board, the NAS2 processor. So if you click on this, the ELF file, so your, actually, your program is not 10 kilobytes long, it's around four kilobytes, okay, code plus initialized data. All right, so let's just download this. So the way you download this is you make something called run configurations. So go to run, uh, run configuration. All right, so it's a NIOS 2 hardware. Uh, let's launch a new configuration. And as usual, it takes time on my tablet. And it takes forever on my tablet. So let me pause this. Okay, so just as I paused, it basically came back up. All right, so what is the name of the project is display high, and it should get the ELF file. There it is, there's the ELF file. So now it's saying no NIOS to target connection paths were located. If you go into target connection, and you actually make this a little bigger, or if you scroll to the right, you can see this refresh connection. So if you refresh it, there is the NIOS connection. Right. So let's see. Let's refresh it again. You gotta refresh it a couple of times before you actually get it. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right. Let me pause this. So it take. Okay. So we're finally done. That is, if we basically hit run in that little run configuration window. So it has started the processor, so you can see all the messages. Let me, hopefully it doesn't crash this. All right, so its processor is passed. So the system ID initialized the CPU cache, downloaded the code. And well, for those of you here, you can actually see HI. So yeah, that's about it. And all right, and now I have to start for my next class.